Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So today we're looking at contemporary, well, even some older, but main battle tanks, their ballistics, armor penetration, and how realistic the ammunition and the ballistics are modeled in DCS. Now the whole reason for this video we're doing now is that we had a video yesterday which was what I'd call the tutorial for the main battle tanks. So we went through all of these main battle tanks you've got in front of us here. I went through some basic statistics, weight, speed, stuff like that. And then I started firing the different guns that they've got at targets. Uh, they were close range targets and using the different kinds of ammo. And for my very untrained, uninformed eye, I don't know much about armor at all, I probably never will do, but it didn't seem right. Different types of ammo had weird effects that just didn't seem uh, logical. Now, admittedly, I have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to armor, so which is why I brought uh, someone useful in. Um, the, the benefit of being in GR is that we actually do get some experts. We've got real aviators and we've got real um, armor guys. So, you allowed to say what you were, Tanky? An ex-member of the oldest and greatest tank regiment in the world, mate. <coughs> I wasn't laughing there. I genuinely, <coughs> genuinely choked on my teeth. My apologies. <laughs> yeah. Were you, uh, what was your... So, you're in tank. So, what kind of things were you... Um, what was your like position, or did you change round positions, and what kind of vehicles? So, well, as it started off um, back when I joined the uh, the Second Royal Tank Regiment, um, you started off as a driver and then progressed up through the different positions of the vehicle. Um, ended up finishing my career, moving on to being the loader um, after doing a stint as well in the, the gunner seat. Um, now, the loader is basically the second in command of the vehicle. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty much there's only one job that I didn't do on it. Roger, wicked. So basically, we've got Tanky because he's done this for real. So he knows what's realistic and what's not. Now, um, so uh, so what we're trying to find is how the ballistics work in DCS, the modelling, and if we think it's realistic or not. Okay. Now, the usual thing that we would do is just ask ED, the technical guys in ED, and we'll get just some spiel from them, and then we'll be able to convey that to you. However, we have pretty much lost contact with the technical guys in ED. I don't know why this is, but we're basically being ignored now. It's very frustrating, but it is the way it is. So we're going to have to just work it out all ourselves. Uh, so we've got Tanky as the advisor. Let me show you what we've got. We've got all our tanks here, and we'll have a bit of a chat about them and fill in the blanks that I didn't understand. And with targets, I may be able to zoom in here, or maybe not, so stand by, yeah, I can. But these guys here, for memory, they're about 1,000 meters, one kilometer away. These guys here are um, just under two kilometers away. And these guys here, right in the distance, are either three or four kilometers. I can't even hold the camera still. Three or four kilometers away. So we're really going to test what the tank can do. And they're different aspects. So look, these ones here are face in front. These ones are 45 degree glance. These ones are 90 degrees. And they've all got the same setup. So we can check that ballistics like that. Um, uh, I've made all of the bad guys Abrams. Just odd just in my mind they're just you know the average uh, modern and contemporary tank as far as i'm aware um and uh, to keep all these statistics uh, uh, kind of a level playing field and um, but we're going to use different weapons here so first of all mr tanky we'll talk about some of our tanks we've got so the first thing i noticed is that barrel length um some of them have got long barrels some of them got short barrels now we didn't any information i've got uh, that you haven't seen but in the video that's coming out we didn't have anything about really of the gun apart from the diameter of the bullet or the shell we didn't have any information about the gun itself uh, about the length muzzle velocity is there anything like that do we know why some of these have got long barrels and some short now the, the thing that annoys me is a lot of the respected ones um hmm, i've got to be careful what i say here but well the the merkava the israeli one near the near the left it's got the shortest barrel of them all but it's re revered as one of the best so that doesn't make sense. So what do we know about barrel length and its relationship to tanking? So with, with the barrel length, um, predominantly, if you're looking at different um, vehicles, you've got to also look at you know, how their barrels are made up. Yeah. Um, you'll find that basically the Brits uh, are the only people in the world, as far as I can remember, or near enough, um, the only people in the world, unless we sell them the vehicles that have rifle barrels. Oh. Um, everybody else uses smoothbore, and you generally, the longer the barrel, the more accurate it is. Same with anything, you know, whether it be uh, a cannon or uh, a rifle or a pistol. Mm -hmm. the, the longer something is, the more accurate it generally is. Uh, but you also get um, different pressures that uh, they can handle as well. Mm -hmm. So. 
you then get different muzzle velocities. Now, uh, with a short barrel, you have a lower muzzle velocity because it just doesn't have that length to build up that mm-hmm. pressure in to throw that round down range. Um, so that's generally the, the whole reason why you've got these different barrel lengths on there. And the McGurva is also designed more for building and fire um, build up areas. Yeah. Um, and where you've got a long barrel there is a real oh, sort of because you know you're trying to get around corners of buildings and mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. Right. So long longer barrel isn't necessarily the best. I mean, it might give you depend. I mean, okay. Right. Sorry uh, to my absolute stupidness, but where's the bloody which one's the challenger? Is it the fourth from the right or is that the German one? Is it the fifth? It's fifth from the right, right isn't it? Looking from the front. Is that us? Okay, Charlie. Uh, you got. Good morning, guys. Right next to the leopard, so it's one, two, three, fifth in, challenger two. Fifth in from the right or the left, from the front? From the left. So you've got uh, Abrams, McCabe, uh, Yep. Abrams again, that's the second Abrams. Yeah, Abrams. Uh, and then leopard, leopard two, two, and a challenger two. And a challenger. Yeah, Roger. Right, cool. Okay. So, so that's led, led us directly onto our next question is, some of these have got rifle barrels, and I always assumed all tanks would have rifle barrels, but but most of these have got smoothbore, and can you explain what the reason for that is? So smoothbore, um, from the American point of view, is they also like to fire missiles like the shillelagh out of um, the barrels of their guns. And you can't do that if it's rifled. Um, but the only downside to that is you do then get some inherent inaccuracies mm. um, because you know, as a, a round travels down uh, a rifle barrel it starts to spin mm-hmm. and that spinning puts accuracy down so you can hit from a longer range but you have a slightly lower velocity uh, of the round coming out of the, uh, the barrel. Mm-hmm. That's why on the Abrams we have a lot of sensors and a big computer to aim for. Oh, us. we've got a rail hill. We've got two, we've got the two tank boys. This is perfect. perfect. Right, okay. So we've got more inherent inaccuracy on the smoothbore which i completely understand it's like the musket versus the rifle equation isn't it um and we've done some testing earlier and we've found exactly that the abrams simply doesn't have the accuracy of the rifled barrel ones uh, because of the reasons we've just talked about but okay guys uh, so that's that and they like to fire missiles down them so that's cool um another quick question the barrels in my mind, a barrel would be like on an old battleship. It was just a big steel tube. But these are not. They've got lumps and bumps and different sections of a barrel. What's all that about? They've got these even these little kind of splodgy catalytic converter bits halfway down the barrel. Is that what? Yeah. That? Those That's are called a bore uh, evacuator. Um, so you want as high a pressure as you can get going down that barrel. Roger. But the problem being is that... With that high pressure, you get a lot of fumes and things created. And so what the fume extractor does is it vents off some of the gases coming out so it doesn't then go back into the turret and choke the crew out. Oh, uh, and then you have that little bit of a vacuum which then pushes everything out. Yep. Okay, boys. Very good, very good. Okay. Um, a bit has... Well, I've got you here. It's quite rare to have you both here. Let's just talk about um, kind of body design, tank design and whatnot. Um, so my understanding is my limited understanding is slope is good so all these tanks are designed to be shot at from the front aren't they hence they're kind of sharp and slopey at the front right yeah I noticed that that, that if I'm kind of going in my camera and I'm going side view now uh, the Abrams the Abrams is really the turret is almost 90 degrees at the front it's not slopey is that is that a lazy design, you know? Whereas if you look at the Macava or the Leopard 2, it's, it's... It's supposed to have um, an angled slope on the front of that. It is angled, but we're talking uh, like 30 degrees as opposed to 80 degrees of some of the tanks. Yeah, it's it's a difficult one to really quantify uh, because you've got different logics behind things. Um, the Challenger 2 itself was designed to almost be a stealthy tank as well. Um, so that's why you find a lot of there isn't a lot of stuff hanging off the outside whereas if you look at the older stuff and yeah you can look at the, the Soviet stuff there as well they have lots of bins and boxes and mm-hmm. cages and things hanging off the outside yeah. um, so that was one reason why you have these fairly rocky shapes mm-hmm. but uh, as Rao said yeah, you, it's there, you're supposed to have a slope to help defeat certain types of rounds yeah. um, but 
and even the reason how much you want to do it as well. Well, there's a reason behind the sloping and for the sloping cap. The sloping is an increase in armor, and it gives you um, kind of like a glancing yeah. area for the. Ra Technically, the reason that you have the sloped armor is if you take a piece of three-inch armor and then you turn it and put it on a 30-degree angle, mm -hmm. technically, the thickness of the armor you just doubled. Yeah, See? exactly. Yeah. Geometrically. So, yeah, that's what it's for is the angular position of it and the decrease and increase in angle actually can give you more thickness in the armor. You see how that works yeah, with the I, angle yeah, change? Yeah, I see that. And you take it to this stream, you've got the Israeli Makava turret, which is literally just like yeah. a block of a wedge. Yeah, it's a wedge, literally. Roger, okay. So uh, you've also got the fact that what you're seeing on the outside of the vehicle is purely cosmetic. Mm -hmm. Right. The armor is hidden underneath that. Uh -huh. okay. Right. That's a good and point. And now you also have to realize, too, that on some tanks you'll watch it, like the Abrams, you'll notice how um, it only slopes back. Like you don't have a bottom slope to it. On some yeah. tanks, you'll have that little lip in the front. Some some countries see it different than others. Like um, you don't want to take a tank round in that slip ring around the turret. Yeah. So they don't yeah. put a bottom angle on it. It's only an on, an upward angle. So yeah. the round deflects up and out. Roger. Or up and off. Yeah, so what you mean? So that's a weak point then, kind of where the turret yeah. joins the. Makes sense, doesn't it? Okay. While we're yeah. on armor then. So, if we just talk about the basic, you know, the normal type of armor, just metal, metal. My understanding of a tank is that you're going to put, I'm pretty sure you're, all these tanks are going to have the thickest armor at the front and the thinnest at the back and medium on the side. Would you agree with that? It's relevant to what we're doing today. Yeah, really, that's, that's how it works. Almost, almost the, the thinnest armor is on top. It's, oh. It's the top oh. of the turret. Yeah, I didn't think yeah, about that, think but, about yeah, that. I guess, but yeah, I guess that's, that's what you mean. That's that's why ninety percent of all of your ground based munitions now, like your toes, they don't actually hit the vehicle. What a tow two Bravo um, missile does is it flies over and it has a downward facing shape charge. Mm -hmm. So as it flies over the tank, it explodes over it, and then the shape charge goes through the top turret of the tank. That's how it kills the whole tank. Like the one in armor. The, the, the yeah, like yeah, like the javelins do. You know how the javelins, mm. the, the indirect, it goes way up in the air and then comes straight down. Yeah. The same, yeah. same. Hellfires do exactly the same as well. Yes, they do. Okay, because we're a bit spoiled. We come from armor three. If you're watching this, we do armor three as well as DCS. Now the reason we do that is because armor three is infantry and tanks. You know that's that, that's what it simulates, and it simulates it very well. Even if it, you know, some of our videos look a bit silly. It's you know the tanks we shoot against uh, are very well calculated. Where the weapons we use, if we hit them in different panels. The, the tanks, they're all calculated, the model. Now, I don't think we're going to find that is the same in DCS. I think it's going to be much simpler is what we're going to find. Um, but, yeah, so so all these panels in, in Armour 3 would be modelled with the different types of weapons for penetration and stuff. But Because DCS is a, it's a flight sim, really. They probably haven't gone to that level. Okay, so that's Armour Thickness. So what we're going to see at the end of the day is we can shoot these tanks and it's going to be much harder to kill them from the front. That's simple logic. We can expect that. Out of interest, uh, we're slightly ahead here, but I'm presuming is the what I call the glancing blow effect. It's a thing, isn't it? So in real life, if we shot a tank and it was 45 degrees and we hit it on the side, it, in real life it would do less penetration than hitting a tank square at 90 degrees because you get a kind of blo glancing blow effect. Is that a thing, or is that just my mind? Well, you yeah. have. Yeah normalization of rounds as well um, so depending on how the round is shaped and what type of round it is depends on if you actually penetrate it or not so right. yeah, let's say you're engaging it with a, a head or though that you wouldn't um, because the way a hash round is made it's a high explosive squash head mm -hmm. so it actually flattens out um, before it detonates so that would normalize the round off and actually it wouldn't really matter so much uh, mm -hmm. between a 45 and a 90 degree angle Roger. Okay, I'm just thinking anything else before we go into the ballistic speed stuff. No, uh, been through armors. Okay, so let's start to start talking about why we're here then. Now, uh, DCS is obviously it's a um, simplification. It's going to be simpler than armor. You only get two types of rounds for all of these tanks I found when I was playing with them. You get armor piercing, and you get what it calls HE. Now, what is 
a tank, modern contemporary battle tank, HE. Is that a Hesh or is it literally just, is it Frag or? Uh, if it's British, it's Hesh. Because um, we don't use just a normal high explosive round. Mm -hmm. um, but other nations do use high explosive rounds. Um, and they are just literally a shell that is filled with 20 kilograms of explosive. Like an artillery shell. And when it impacts, it blows up. Yeah. Uh, it's always um, used against soft skin targets like mm -hmm. Land Rovers, um, bunkers, uh, or um, lights, um, IFEs, so mm -hmm. like a BMP1. Um, and that's generally what you would use high explosive Hesh for. Yeah. It's kind of like the uh, the Bradley. Uh, it uses a standard, but I know the Abrams uses a different kind of HE round. It's got some kind of standoff explosion on it. Mm hmm. Okay, guys. Okay. I mean, the whole reason um, that we're doing this is because I was just having a play the other day with some various tank, these various tanks, and I found that the what it calls the HE round was ridiculously good at killing main battle tanks and that didn't seem right to me at all and that's why I've got you two guys in and that's why we're, we're doing this so can we uh, do we assume in that case that all of the HEs in all of these tanks which are very good at defeating tanks are going to be Hesh that, oh, not, no. not necessarily Hesh, um, the only difference between a Hesh round and a HE round is the fact that you have the detonator on the back of a Hesh round and it deforms to form a scab, a patty, uh, before it actually detonates. Uh, whereas a normal HE round will have the fuse on the front yeah. and it will detonate on impact. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how does that Hesh work? Is it some kind of proximity range fuse? No, it's literally, instead of it being on the nose, mm -hmm. it's on the tail. Um, you know, to put it into aviation terms, you know, it's the, basically tail fusing on your, oh. your DB bombs instead of nose. So it hits, hits the vehicle before it detonates? Yeah. Oh, how interesting. Okay, that's the thing. Didn't realise that. Okay, so let's quickly talk about armour piercing round. So again, remember, DCS is a simplified model. Uh, all of these tanks you know, all ten of them or whatever, have got something called AP, uh, an armor piercing round. What is that? Is that that kind of weird dart thing, that, like arrows? So, yeah, in, in modern day terms, um, it's a long dart. Um, it's armor piercing, fin stabilized, it's the Harding Shabo, a, Shabo APDFS uh, rounds. Um, and, and they vary greatly uh, in size as well uh, and materials um, they can be made from anything from tungsten to depleted uranium great roger so if i was actually looking at them they do look like kind of like a dart almost that you throw at a pub or something you wouldn't they so, so. yeah and that's what's on the inside of the uh, the actual round that you throw yeah. up. uh here you go cat stand by stand by get you a picture of one destroy guys at home you won't be able to see this but I'm not receiving anything real. The dart itself is um, surrounded in what's referred to as petals. Um, so as it come, leaves the barrel, these petals come off and then the dart goes down range. Yeah, yeah, I do you, yeah, I know what you mean. What are those petals made of? Uh, generally aluminium or just some sort of waste metal. It's, it's nothing special. It's literally just to plug yeah, the diameter. of pressure, isn't it? Right. It's a little okay. freaking okay. load. There you go. Stand by. See that rod oh, that runs yeah. through the middle? That's how big it is. It's not very big it around. It's really long. Yeah, it's like a dart, literally, yeah. like you said, like you'd use at a pub almost. Is that, and that, and the, the metal that's made of is harder than the. Oh, uh, that's made metal. out of. Yeah, that's made out of depleted uranium. <laughs> yeah, so that's a lot harder yeah. than the steel or whatever. The yeah. Tank uh, made of. Like I said, it could be made from anything from tungsten. To DU. Yeah, it's DU is just really, really dense. <laughs> controversial, right? Well, it's controversial right now because it creates nuclear or radioactive dust when you shoot it. Oh, really? That's one of the big things, like yeah. um, Gulf um, War syndrome. <laughs> that's what they try to blame it on. So I don't. Mm, okay. Uh, mm. uh, generally, they're, they're fairly safe when you, you've 
handling them, um, but when yeah. it comes out of the the barrel and hits the target, that's generally where you get the uh, the. Dust yeah, coming. yeah. It's not it's not the handling of the round and everything. You're not going to glow just for touching the mm. round. It's just the dust, and then ninety percent of everything. Well, pretty much everything it hits becomes radioactive. Mm, how interesting. Yeah, so I'm not glowing yet, so I uh, know it's safe. Okay, guys. Right, now, when we're talking about rounds, I'm sure there's different other types in real life, but again, in DCS, which is what we're doing today, that's all you get. You get RAP, you get HE, so that's as far as we're going to take it. Um, just to jump back a little bit to something else I remember. So you've got, you've got the armour um, of the vehicle, you know, it's metal, steel, whatever. Um, when I was reading through the statistics, there's something I didn't understand, and I may get the terminology wrong. There's something like active armour or something. Um, Re reactive yeah, that's, armor. Um, explosive reactive armor is one of them. Um, and you have a passive armor as well, um, which is like page armor, which is more for defeating tandem warhead RPG seven. Right. So, hang on. Which one? So, the reactive armor is explosives on your tank. Is that right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, the way it works is it goes off, um, and the blast itself sort of negates um, the incoming round. Does it blow it up or does it...? It depends on the actual system that's being used. Um, if you have a truly active system, it will detonate beforehand and then destroy the round before it hits the uh, the vehicle. Or you have explosive plates um, which go off when the round hits the vehicle, but it deflects the blast away from the actual vehicle itself. Mm -hmm. So it's all about controlling that blast then. It's weird, isn't it? Setting off your own explosion away from the tank and destroy something else. It's quite clever stuff. Okay, so how does it detect that round coming in there? Because that round coming in is coming in at 2,000 meters a second or whatever. Or, you know, whatever. It's coming in fast, isn't it? And what on earth is it sitting in, it's sitting in there well, detecting it? Or is it all classified? Got, um, yeah, if you've got the truly active one that goes off before the round hits, um, there are various different sensors uh, around the vehicles, whether they be lasers um, or uh, microphones and things like that, that detect the rounds coming in. Yeah, I know right. that. Um, I know that Abrams is mainly passive, if I'm not mistaken, but they're creating the new active ones for all American-based ground vehicles. Mm. Mm. And uh, I'm not sure how it works. All I know is that he shoots like a small explosive projectile at the incoming round. It's crazy. Wow, that's that's getting impressive at that point, isn't it? So you almost yeah. want to say you in World War Two when you were going down the streets um, of uh, I don't know Berlin or something. You you wanted your men to huddle around the tank, but you know, now they will get blown up by their own reactive armor. It's a bit weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, that's that's that. And you did mention another type of armor there that I didn't quite catch. What was the other one? You've got cage armor. Um, so basically, um, you know when you're playing armor three and you see all of that racking that shit, on the yeah. outside of the vehicles. Slat armor, standoff. Yeah. Okay, I'm yeah. just looking at the back of Merkava and I see that slatting. What's that for? That's to defeat tandem warhead. Um, things like the RPG seven. Um, I think yeah. it's the RPG seven V. Um, basically, a long rod on the end, mm -hmm. and that long rod hits the side of the vehicle um, and then pushes the fuse back. Mm -hmm. And it works almost like a, a hash round. Um, but the slat armor, it will let the rod hit the side, mm -hmm. but then the actual um, warhead itself detonates against the slat armor. Yep. And so it doesn't damage the vehicle. Alright, cool. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, guys, anything you want to add about gunnery, ballistics, or armor before we start putting some shells down round, down range? Um, the only thing I would say is that you have to remember that um, fin rounds or AP um, uh, have a different flat trajectory oh, yeah. to chemical weapons um, like hash rounds and AP where they're more lobbed to the uh, the targets uh, so why so is that because the fin round it does it have a higher velocity and barrel pressure yeah it's oh. um, a hell of a lot higher um, if you look at the bag charge for a fin round it is the full diameter of the barrel uh, they're about three and a half foot in length, wow. um, and it literally it just fills the entire barrel for in rounds. Whereas if you go with one for hash round, it's half of that and in a cloth bag. 
Are these bags separate to the bullet, if you know what I mean? Or, no, what am I trying to say? You know the big yeah. shell you um, see, the big brass thing? Is is the bag separate to that, or is it in that? Well, that, this is another thing which makes the Brits truly unique. We use three-piece ammunition, wow. where the, American the rest of the world use one piece. Yeah, um, one piece. We will do a round, a bag charge, and a thing called a tube vent electrical. Right, so, okay, so, hmm. So why, is there any reason for that, why we have that separate? We like being different. Um, but you've yeah. also got the fact that we, we can load really ridiculously quickly. Um, a good loader um, on a hedge engagement can have three rounds in the air at the same time. Wow. One hitting the target, one flying, and one just leaving the barrel. Um, but that's a long range engagement, you know, sort of like five k's away or something like that. Yeah. Okay. I know the American uses um, cap. They use a one-piece disintegrating cartridge, so pretty much that big old shell that you would be pulling out doesn't come out. All you get is the aft cap. Oh, up. So it goes from being what a two-foot shell to a four-inch aft cap. Yeah, right. So okay, that's interesting. It it the uh, the way that the American one works, like I said, it cuts down on all those casings being in the in the actual. Mm turret with you so mm -hmm. cool how oh, interesting okay guys right so what uh so the main thing we picked up there is a ap round or the fin round whatever you want to call it that's that's kinetic so that's going to go a flat trajectory super high fast muzzle velocity and the he round is going to be m more lobbed kind of more not you know like a mortar but you know a few degrees up low velocity and is there any reason why that he is it uh, being such low velocity is it, is it because we would actually destroy it with our own pressure if we were sending it out like a fin round? You would risk a detonation um, if it was going, but it also it weighs a lot more. Yeah, um, yeah. So you would need a lot more speed to go behind it yeah. to get it the same sort of distance. Whereas if you do it arced, you need less pressure, less speed to get it the same distance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay, guys. Coolio. Um, right, so we're going to start shooting some stuff. Now the question is, what tank, to keep you, um, stuff relatively uniform, I guess we stick with the same tank, what tank is going to be accurate here? Are we going well, to go for, for a rifle barrel or a smooth barrel? Uh, it all depends, yeah. if you want accuracy, you can't beat a Chally 2. Yeah, I mean... I, yeah, I, challengers. <laughs> I do, because, and the reason I want accuracy is because I want repeatability. Um, so I want to be able to hit that tank at 2,000 meters and hit it in the same place every time because otherwise we're not doing it air quotes scientifically so I would okay. say your challenger is going to be your sniper rifle that you want is yeah that, challenger uh, is yeah. world famous for yeah. accuracy. is that the only um, rifle barrel here do we know uh, give me two I don't know what's on the field oh, so. you can, right uh, basically every well I don't know I don't know anything about them okay I'm going to set myself up in my challenger challenger I'm going to go in. Yeah, Chani 2 is the only rifle barrel there. Everything else is smooth. Ball. Awesome. Right. Okay, guys. So, out of interest, uh, people watching at home, a right click to zoom in like that. And I'm going to press the L, the lever key, and I'm, I'm going to get a laser range. You can see 1819 meters. And if I press the left button now and fires, it would automatically. Um, Put the barrel up, elevate the barrel up to compensate for the dip of the bullet depending on what bullet we've got. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, how that works, Tanky, in kind of real life? So, you have a number of different systems. Um, you've got a ballistics computer on board, um, which then takes various data from various different bits. So, if you're looking at the Cali 2 from the outside at the moment, yeah. you've got a big black cylinder that's just sticking out the top of the turret. Oh, yeah, what the hell is that? That's a meteorological sensor. Uh -huh. um, so that detects wind speed, oh. air, uh, air pressures, um, and that's all taken into account when it's doing its ballistic calculations. Okay. Um, you then have that paired with the laser sight, uh, the laser range finder on there. Yeah. And all of that information whenever you laser target is all then fed into the uh, ballistics computer. It does loads of different calculations and it will basically aim off uh, elevation because uh, it's got the range there yeah. and it'll also if you're tracking a moving target help you put the, uh, the correct amount of lead onto the target for a first time hit Roger. 
Yeah, moving yeah. target. Yeah. yeah, moving targets. I haven't looked at yet, but okay. Yeah. It works the same way, kind of on on the uh, A rooms. I know, but that meteor. I know that it has a sensor out on the end of the barrel that determines barrel position, everything else, and it allows it to shoot while the tank is moving in the stabilizer. Ah, Roger. It floats. Whenever you see it, like if you watch a video of an Abrams moving across, that barrel literally floats up and down as it's going across the terrain with the stabilization. Roger. Yeah, all the, uh, the vehicles that you have here are the older Russian stuff. Mm -hmm. Most of them should have a stage system. Roger. Stop. Uh, yeah. I've had a little play with that in DCS and I can't get that kind of floating barrel to work in DCS and it may or may not work. If anyone knows, let me know, but I can't work out how to do that. I don't think it's modelled. No, we don't think it's modelled. You have to you have to basically stay yeah. still in DCS, but fine, it's you know it's not a tank simulator at the end of the day. Okay, that's fine guys. Right, so should we start with armor piercing in the challenger then? Um and we'll yes, go with red. Right, so I've got right I've got some information at the bottom of my challenger here. I've got Oh, you can't jump in one, so you're going to have to take my word for it. Uh, first of all, I've lased a target that's head on. I've got 991 meters. I've got G. I don't know what that means. Then I've got a fin, which is our type of round, a fin round. Then we've got one. I don't know what that is. Then I've got the range of meters. Then I've got L. I don't know what that is. And then I've got first, F I R S T. So G, fin, one, distance L, first. Um, I don't suppose you know what I mean. It's, it's not a proper simulator. Okay. Uh, um, it's it's similar to what you, is the readout that you would get in the real thing. Um, L is an laser. Mm -hmm. um, first, you have a couple of different modes that you can actually fire the laser to get the range because that depends on weather conditions, whether it's raining and things like that. Okay. Um, so this is actually getting the range off the first laser return that it gets back. Yeah. Um, the other one would be blast. Um, so it will then get the range off the last laser return that's coming back. Roger. Interesting, okay. Now just to show the accuracy of this laser finder, I'm aiming different parts of the tank and it's coming back with different ranges. So it is perfectly accurate in terms of, you know, it's modelled all the panels on the tank for this laser. So that's a good impression. That's a good first start. So it's not using a big hitbox. It's actually measuring it off those panels. So that's good. Right, so I'm going to take a shot at this guy. He's uh, just under 1,000 meters. So would you would you classify that as close, medium, or long in a in a modern tank? 1,000 meters is not a great range. I would say that's sort of a long, short range uh, to a short, medium. Right. Okay. So it shows how big these distances are. Because you know, a kilometer away is in real life, it's bloody miles away. Okay, and I'm going to have a pop at him um, now. I'll take one guy um, on the hull and I'll take one guy on the turret to see if we've got any difference. Where do you want me to aim on the hull of this Abrams? On the downward sloping bit or the upward sloping bit? So generally in gunnery uh, you are taught to aim for the centre of the usable target. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, because you want to do a load of testing on here that's not really going to make a great deal yeah. of difference to skills. Um, so, Slam it wherever you like. Okay, I'm going to go for what I'd consider the biggest panel of the hull, which is the downward sloping bit. I'm going to get it right in the middle. I'm going to relay and I'm going to fire. Hit him. So there's one shot, no effect. And the, it, annoyingly, it doesn't tell me if I'm doing any damage. If it's a non-main battle tank I'm firing against, it will tell me a percentage damage uh, because these vehicles, at least the other things other than the main battle tank, have just hit points. You can see at the top right there, I have an amount of hit points. Uh, so it's a very basic damage model in terms of that. Um, so I don't know how many points I'm taking off him. So I'm going to keep firing until I kill him, basically. So, two. Wait for settle. Three. Those rounds are looking like they're falling short. Yeah, I mean thing is I'm seeing them explode on the tank I think it's a desync problem so I'm not gonna worry too much about that I mean how can I tell can you go and jump over to that actual tank and and click on him yeah that's what I've done um, and that one looked as if it was just slightly left Roger well I put I'm just putting my chart I put four rounds on him I'm gonna jump to the one on the right now the very far right 
And this time, I'm going to go centre mass of that of that hull, just to make sure we do hit him at least. I'm going to laze. I'm going to fire. I'm going to fire. I think there's a bit of inaccuracy there. One swerved right, one swerved down. Yeah, I saw that one uh, slam about 100 metres in front of the vehicle. Oh, no, no, that's just desync. I definitely saw it ping, ping on his armour. So I'm not going to worry about what you're seeing then. I think that's desync. I'm going to keep powering it away at him. Yeah, I'm definitely hitting him in my view. So that's three. Four, all on the bullseye. So, what would what would happen if I was actually shooting this real Abrams at 1,000 meters, kind of centre mass in the hull? What were these bullets going to actually do? Are they going to sling off? Or are they going to? So, what uh, the thin round would do is, because it, it's travelling so so fast, it basically punches a hole through the vehicle. Yeah. Um, and would just literally go through. So depending on exactly where you're, you're aiming, if it, you're on the lower glacius yeah. um, of the hull, um, it would literally just go straight through, you know, uh, the, the hull itself, through the driver because that's they generally sit in the, the centre of the vehicle. Yeah. Um, out through the engine uh, and the engine bay and out the back, and we create a vacuum and basically cook and suck everybody through. Wow. Yeah. So that's not very nice. Okay. Dying in a tank is not very nice at all to an AP run. So they wouldn't, imagine, they wouldn't, they wouldn't just imagine getting there. sucked out of a hole about, what, about two inches wide? Nice. Yeah, about that. <laughs> just because of the pressures involved, presumably. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the speeds of these things travel are ridiculously fast. Yeah. And when it goes through that thing it literally does create a vacuum of such pressure it will suck the human body through that hole without any questions yeah okay, okay it turns okay. you into a chunky mist out the other side of the tank so i've just put 10 rounds and i've hit that hull every time in the lower glacius and it's still there so why am i why is my 10 ab rounds not killed it i'm not i'm the master here so you know but it's definitely hitting the tank Oh, I know, Janky. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You can be in that tank. Go and jump in that tank. I just realised. Let's see if tell me what his health points is. On mine, that vehicle is reading 100%. Let oh. me just double check that I am on the right vehicle. Do you want me to shoot it? Yeah, go, go for it. Yeah, it's still reading 100. Yeah, I can see we're going to take... Okay, so I'm going to rest there. So what we've learned is, in DCS, with a Challenger 2 shooting the lower part of the front hull of an Abrams, we get zero penetration, zero damage. How realistic is that? Zero. So that first part is a fail. Uh, we think we should get penetration. Okay, now I'm going to start hitting the... Yeah, then this is why I've done this video chat, because it just didn't seem right to me. Now I'm going to start hitting the turret... I'm going to start hitting, from my view, the left front panel of the turret. I'm just going to laser up, right in the centre. Okay, and let's see if we start getting any damage. AP. Yeah, I hit it bang on in that left, whatever it's called, of that turret. You still 100%? Still 100%. Yeah, so something ain't right. Need. I've just got to reload from my magazine. It'll take a few seconds. Well, let's keep going head on. Do you keep just face at me for the time being? And stop. Right, firing again. I'm going to put a few rounds into that turret. Oh, you're blown up. Yep, yeah, I just saw that guy. So why did... So let me just check how many rounds. That was 13 rounds on the... Um, that was 13 rounds. This is kind of what I got. 13 rounds on the hull and zero effect. And it was... I believe that was two rounds on the turret and it blew up all of a sudden. So what's all that about? It's like... Yeah, what I would surmise that that would be is the fact that the round would have gone through the cheek, uh, through the armoured stowage bins in the back of the uh, the turret of that vehicle and detonated the ammunition. So that is possibly a realistic effect. So let's jump into the next one, just to repeat that exercise, the next one along. 
Uh, if you just jump in that and give me a wiggle of the turret so I can see it's working. Yep, okay, I'm going to do the same thing. And let's see if we can do some repeatability. So I'm going to look at the, the left cheek now and I'm going to fire with AP. That one actually dipped a bit, so I may negate that one. I'm going to fire again. Takes a while to reload now for some reason. What's changed? I can fire again. That's two in the turret and it's dead again. So at least it was repeated. Two in the turret kills it each time. So, to kill an Abrams with a challenger, two in the turret or infinite basically in the belly. Uh, which is... Yeah, I think it stands a simplistic damage modeling. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh, let's now move on to a side aspect or, or uh, like a, a 45 degree aspect. If I aim at that first 45 degree aspect, if you can give me a wiggle of the turret. Got an oblique shot, isn't it? Yeah, okay, oblique shot. Uh, no, that's um, back up a few. The first oblique one, so not the 90 degree one. The first 45 degree one, I would call it. Next to the straight ones. Okay, there it is. Right, I'm going to shoot an AP right into the side of it at oblique, for about 45 degrees. You know, you can. It's not perfectly, but I'm going to give that a shot there, and let's see how much damage we can do. What's your health now? That's uh, down to two percent. Down to two percent. So that's almost killed yep. you. I'm going to put another one yep. through there. Oh, we've got to wait a second. I did that here. I think that may have actually missed. Uh, it looked like it was just off on my front right. Mm, I'm just gonna do it again. Oh, sorry, I forgot to laze. My bad. Dickhead. Right, firing again. Okay, it's hitting you now. No, so I didn't impact. So they, these might actually be spooning off to the side then, because I'm definitely hitting. Number four, about to go out. Second. Okay, and that will finish you off. Can you jump That's in the good. next one down and we can try and repeat that? So technically that took four shots, uh, but I think one, maybe even two, missed. So I'm laser ranging. Okay. I don't think that frag of the cook-off is going to hurt you. Are you still 100%? Yeah, it's still one. Watch out. Firing now. Oh, that kills you in one shot. Okay, so that AP killed you in one shot for some reason. Can you jump in the next one? Because these are all identical shots I'm doing, so it doesn't really... I think there's an element of randomization. Are you in the third one now? Just moving into it now. Okay, cap firing. And that one killed you first. So, yeah. so I'm killing you first time from a 45 degree oblique shot on the side. How realistic would you consider that of the hull this is? Um, it, 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 it's, it's probable, um, down to the fact that you know where ammunition is stowed, you can cause a cook off, which yeah. will, will kill it in one shot. Roger. Okay. All right, this, uh, can you jump in one of the 90 degree ones? I'm pretty sure I'm just going to kill you in one shot again, but we'll try it just to make sure. Okay, I'm going to relays. Okay, I'm just firing dead centre of the hull. Now. Seemed to hit you in the tracks. How did that hurt? No damage. Interesting, I wonder if it hit you in the tracks. Okay, relazing and firing. That hit you right in the hull. Yeah, so you, you've got it partly down to the fact that the ballistics in ECS for these are not brilliant. Yeah. You know, if that was a, a real fin round, that would go exactly where you've got the okay. centre of your fight. Yeah. Okay, so what we've learned pretty much, if you actually hit. I think the wheels don't, um, on the side, the wheels don't seem to do any damage. Every time the bullets dipped a bit and hit the wheels, you said, no, no damage. Every time I saw the explosion, the impact on the actual 
you know, the side of the hull, I guess you would call it, it's killed your first time pretty much, or taking it down to about 2%. So, so far we've learned with an AP round from, well, I guess we'd consider an accurate average contemporary tank. Um, let me read, uh, does, uh, does zero damage if we shoot the front of the hull there. It does, it kills the turret in two hits if you hit it on the front there. If you hit it oblique on the side, or oblique 90 degree or 90 degrees on the side in the hull it kills you in one shot or at least immobilizes you in one shot if you hit it in the wheels because you bullet dip or whatever it does zero damage um, and we might I think we know the answer to this but let's just try the side of the turret can you check the next one please go in the next one I'll just um, do the side of the turret uh, annoyingly I'm gonna have to get a new vehicle here uh, so I'm just gonna pick on a leopard uh, it's not completely scientific but we'll do for now uh, so to be fair, the way these guns are reacting, I don't think we uh, yeah, actually give them like no, the it's actually modelled. I'd agree with that. Right, I'm just lazing you up now. 901. Okay, and fire at your tank in the side of the turret with an AP 120 mil, and that's a kill. That's a kill. So side of turret is also one kill. Okay, so I've got all the data that I want to get. Obviously, from that. Uh, I, we don't need to try it behind, I think. I think I can tell from that that if we shoot you behind, you're going to die in one shot by the looks of things. Um, yeah. So basically, one, pretty much one shot, one kill from the hull or the turret from the side. Uh, two shots uh, kill from the hull, uh, from the turret from the front, and infinite shots on the hull at the front. Let's reset now and uh, tr try that with HE, which is where things start going a bit funny. So yeah, no I think you can probably stay in to stand by. We'll try exactly the same setup, but with HE, and I think it is definitely a squash head for this vehicle. Right. To be fair, knowing DCS, Hesh probably isn't modelled the way it should work. Yep. Well done. Okay, so we're jumping it's in. It's such a unique round that they wouldn't even bother wasting the time for that. Well done. Okay, can you jump in the furthest most frontal one, please? The furthest one, what, at the end of the runway? Um, negative. Um, the same batch of tanks, but the one nearest the runway. Roger that. Okay, we're starting again. We're doing exactly the same, but this time we're using HE. And you now on the bottom of the screen, it's telling me it's HESH. Now, I'm pretty sure, uh, like Tanky was just saying, they probably haven't modelled HESH per se. Um, and all of the HE rounds for all of these tanks seem to do the same thing. So the HE in all of these tanks seems to be the same round. Right, let me know when you're in uh, the tank, thank you. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Right, I'm going to centre mass on the hull. I'm lasing, so I'm going for a lob shot. I go for a lob shot with a HE. Interestingly, I've got the red light on as well, so is there a range limit to the HE? No, it's... Um like I said earlier, five days is easy. Roger. Okay, I've got to fire now. Oh, God. Wow, it looked dramatic, but what percentage damage are you? None. Oh, okay. All right, well, we'll just repeat the experiment. Lays, because what I was finding is this, this HE was killing, whereas the armor piercing wasn't. So, I'm going to aim in the center mass hull again. Lays and fire. Lob. And we've got to kill. And now he's dead. So... Now, bear in mind, AP from the front of the hull took 13 plus shots. A HE only takes two shots to kill it. Um, so that's something to bear in mind, which is bollocks. Completely bollocks, inaccurate. Yeah. yeah, so that's bollocks, right? Let's do the next tank along, please. And I'm going to shoot the turret. I'm pretty sure it's just going to kill it in one or two shots, but we might as well do it. Just give me a wiggle when you're in. Roger. Uh, lazing. Just letting that cook off die down a bit. Blazing that cheek there. And cut is boy up. Right in the turret. So no damage. Yeah. Yeah. Make of that what you will. Relazing, in case my tank gets pushed back. Second shot and fire. And you're dead. So two shots again in the turret. Right, we'll just do, I can see where this is going. So just do one 90 degree um, tank now. Um, and uh, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna kill you in one shot here from the side. Um, 
Just give me a wiggle when you're in, let me know which one you're in. Okay, that's obliques. I'm going to go with an oblique side hull and lays and fire. That is it. Yeah, so basically anything from slightly from the side with HE is going to kill you. You think that's bollocks as well, isn't it? Because it's less powerful than an AP. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. The way the armor works on, on these vehicles is that uh, HE round would not destroy an MBT. Yeah. Um, because there's things like spool liners and things in there to protect the crews. Because um, the way the HE round works is it knocked off a scab, which would then bounce around and kill the crew, but leave the vehicle relatively intact. Okay. And that's just not possible right uh, on an MBT. Okay, and just uh, just to, uh, it does say Hesh here. So is that Hesh, does that change anything with that? Um... No, it not works in exactly the same way. It's just uh, the way it's designed to work. Yep, roger. Okay, so we've done that. Now the only, so we've, uh, that is exactly the same as what I got when I was uh, messing around, which is basically, it's just not working, right? Okay, fair enough. Um, now why don't we have a quick play with some long range stuff then, just because we can. I'm just looking at AP again, and I'm going to see if we can get any variance in the results at distance to see if that's modelled. I imagine it probably is, because it's an easy thing for DTS to model. It knows how fast that bullet is going. Um, so, should we try, yeah, him? I'm going to change my ammo. Okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to try and get the turret. And it usually takes one to two shots to kill with an AP. Now, I'm not sure how accurate this is going to be, so we're just going to have to see. 1817 meters. And I'm going to fire my AP fire. Yeah, that hit the turret for sure. Any damage? Nothing. Roger. I get the feeling your HP meter isn't working right, but we'll keep going and average it out. Relazing and fire. Missed. So it shouldn't miss at one eighteen hundred meters, should it? No, no, that's an easy kill for a challenge. Roger. I'm going to reload. Miss. Oh uh, no! I think I hit. Any damage? Nothing. We're getting huge variance. We're getting up to six, seven feet variance to hit this point. Firing. Hit turret. Any damage? Nothing. So the positive thing is I'm definitely making two, at least two impacts here, and it's not killing it. So at least you kind of got that reduction in kinetic velocity model. And five is out. Hit the turret again. That's dropped it down to 18. Eight one eight. Yeah, 1-8. Roger. So, yeah, this is feeling quite good. I've hit you at least three times in that turret. Firing. Hit the turret again. Eight no feet. change. Roger. It's almost like it's got a randomizer in there. Some kind of randomizer. Firing turret. It could be RNG just... Hit the hull. Hit the hull. Yeah, it's just, like, it's just the same accuracy. Exactly the same accuracy as the um, Abraham. Firing. So, I wore that turret down. Wore that turret down over time. So, the good news is that we've discovered is that if you're an extra thousand meters out, it does take uh, an extra about 300% bullets to kill it. Instead of one to two direct hits, it takes four to, four to six direct hits to kill the turret, um, uh, to kill the tank. So, at least that's possible. Can we try a side, a 90, uh, an uh, oblique um, 2000 meter, please? You can give me a turret wobble when you're ready. Again, 2,000 metres at the end of the runway, yeah? Um, 2,000 metres is the middle lot, so the same lot we've just been looking at, yep. but one that's turned slightly. See me uh, moving the turret now? Mm, oh, there you are. Right, so one shot, uh, one to two shots would have killed you before on the hull, so we're going to try again. Now... We've got inaccuracy to play with here, so let's just see how that works out. I'm going to try and spot where the, where the bullet goes. All right, centre mass hull, firing. Good hit in the hull, any damage? No, nothing. What kind of penetration in real life would we expect Finn at 2,000 metres? He'd go straight through it like a clean nose through that. Wow. Firing. So, yeah, definitely hit in the hull again, any damage? Yeah, it's down to 1%. Oh wow, so basically a kill that is, but we'll finish them off anyway. 
So it's not as deadly as it was. It was one to two shots before. Um, and now it's two plus shots. Firing, lazy firing. Missed. Just dropped about six feet. Lazing firing. Wait. Readjusting. Hit on the wheels. Yeah, no change. Roger. But it's just come down and hit something else. Really lazing firing. Yeah, so the, the accuracy is really marked here. It's, um, again, quite big in accuracy. Hey! Got the side, yeah. So nice. it's now taking three to four shots. So at least we've got some damage reduction. That's all I want to see from... Oh, I just want to see if a HE will kill it. From Can you go in the next tank next to it? If HE is going to be accurate from here. Okay, lazing and firing centre mass hull. HE. Oh, ho, ho, ho. So, yeah. Has that killed you? Wow, so HE is again is a much yeah. more powerful at 2,000 metres than AP. So that's bollocks again, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I, I think the, the way they've worked is they're using the same sort of ballistic calculations and explosive calculations that they do for the the bombs and everything that they have on the aircraft. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Okay, um, just for fun now, we've got all the information we need, but for fun, can I take those 3,000 metre ones down? Go and grab a, uh, uh, one of them. I may not be able to kill these. Um, so what in a challenger what would be your hit percentage on a static target at wait for it at 3,000 meters Charlie static to static 3,000 meters decent gunner um, you're looking at a good 95 to 100 Roger let's see how it actually goes so I've laid you up 3,000 meters Side, I can't really choose body panels at this point because you're just a few pixels, so fire. Missed, hit the bridge. Relazing. Fire. No, reloading. Does this for some reason. Gotcha! Oh, I killed ya! Now here's where it doesn't make sense because that was an AP yeah. and I've never done a, a single kill. Uh, yes, I have done a single kill round. It's weird. Uh, it? I did rotate the turret slightly so I could actually see where you were. Yeah, but that would make uh, it harder for me if anything. But yeah, that's weird. It's almost like there's some randomizer in there that you know every time it hits it rolls the dice and says this time you get X amount of damage bearing in mind these variables. The vehicle that I was in was side on with its hull though. Roger. Um, I did hit it in the hull as well. So, at three thousand meters with a fin round, would I have killed that hitting the hitting the hull on the side? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I quite happily say that would be a kill, especially if you ammo rats. Roger. Okay. So all we've got to do is um, can you go on those head-on ones at high distance, and we'll just try that for fun. I'm going to lob. Oh look! When I change rounds, you can see the gun elevation changing. That's interesting. I'm going to go for HE, this is probably going to be completely unrealistic, but I think it should be fun. Let me know when you're in one of those babies. I'm ready to go, I'm on the uh, rightmost from your position. Ah, can you choose um, the leftmost, because you're behind a helicopter. Yep, lazing, lob. Wow, look at it, lob, it's like a mortar. Oh! Oh! HE killed at three kilometres <laughs> head on. Me don't think so. Yeah. Okay. That's all we need to see, boys. So there is, in summary, there is some logic to it. Okay. Uh, the front hull armour is impenetrable um, to AP. That's bollocks. Um, but that's the logic. The front turret is penetrable but weak uh, to AP. Side on, pretty much one shot of anything will kill it. Uh, which is very relatively realistic, as we've said. Um, hitting the wheel, hitting the wheels in DCS does no damage at all. That's probably unrealistic, but you can understand why they wouldn't want to model that. 
Um, and the, the big th problem is, and why we did this video, is that the HE is much better at killing main battle tanks than AP, which in reality we've nullified. Was, you know, we'd, all, both tank guys here have said that's wrong. Um, so that's just uh, something to say about it. So that's all our data points. Anything you'd like to add to that or any other interesting points you want to add? Um, I suppose it'd be nice if ED could actually model in the rifle barrels and accuracies of um, certain tanks. Um, and they could actually model the kinetic energy rounds, you know, the thin rounds probably as well. That'd be nice. But uh, I doubt that that's going to happen. No, it's, it's not. It's just not. It's just not that detailed. It's not armor detailed, is it? It's, it's as simple as that. No, it's not. Um, but it's just one of those things that you'd like on a wish list. Um, but combined arms isn't played by everybody either, is it? So mm, that's right. I mean, just one quick thing. I'd really want the smoke to work because one of these big things about these tanks is um, we we go and we kill them with tank busters, yeah, with A tens, kill these tanks. But it's completely unrealistic because they just sit there like knobs, just waiting to get shot by a gal. A real challenger doesn't do that. A real challenger pumps out smoke, hides behind trees. I, um, yeah. I, it's, it's really much too easy to, in DCS, to come onto a battlefield with a Harrier or an A-10, take these things down. In, in real life, it will be humendously difficult because those tank crews don't want to die. And I'm just going to quickly oh, look. I'll just look if there's any smoke. No, there's no command for smoke. So there's no smoke. That would be really good if that would add. And I think that would be easy. Um, you know, just, you know, add it, even if you just add a well, smoke marker in. That's the thing. Smoke is generated in two different ways on the, most of these vehicles as well. Um, you have smoke grenade launchers on the turret, um, generally about 10 of them. Yeah. Um, which is maybe fired five at a time, yeah. um, left and right. But then the driver, um, like on a Charlie 2, can actually pump neat diesel onto the exhaust oh, wow. to create smoke screens. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's it. When, whenever I see um, uh, tank examples at shows or whatever, the first thing you see is just fucking plumes of smoke coming out, and you think, cool, that's really effective. Um, we would want that. However, limitations you know rendering ability is it going to clog up the graphics cards and stuff uh, maybe so maybe that's you know there's reasons not to do it um when you think about it bearing in mind it's not really a tank simulator um okay fair yeah. enough. and you've got the fact that uh, generally we would use a thermal site as well to do most of these engagements not an optical yeah yep. yeah we got night vision but it's not thermal obviously um Fair enough. All right, guys, we've done some good testing today, and I've got plenty of data there, um, I, I, and we've got a good impression. I can't really quantify it per se, but I've got a good feel now for how the tank modelling is done, how the bullet model is done, the you know the round type, how the ballistics is done, and whatnot. So it looks cool, but it's not very realistic. Obviously, is the answer to that. Right, um, I'm going to wrap up now, guys. Thank you very much for all the advice, and I'll see you two later. Not a problem, Captain. Catch okay. you later, mate.